This is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be, be glad. glad. Welcome to Worship with St. John's Lutheran Church in Evansville, Wisconsin. A special welcome to guests. We're glad you're joining for worship. We worship God to remember how wonderfully great God is and to remember how wonderfully small we are. And God cares for us all. For worship, I invite you to light a candle as a sign of Christ's presence with you. Have a bowl of water and make the cross on your forehead as a sign of baptism, that you have been claimed by Jesus. And have a Bible ready as we read God's holy word. We may not be able to gather together publicly, but we can still come for worship. And coming for worship, even in this way, helps us to be the church all week long. This is our fourth week in our five-week sermon series on the book of Job, Faith in Adversity. The book of Job helps us consider how to respond in the face of suffering and loss. What to do when we don't know what to do. In our scripture reading today, we'll listen to God speak to Job about how God made the whole wide world. Our Tuesday, 8.30 a.m. prayer service will meet, uh, continue to meet both in person in the fellowship hall with safety guidelines and online. The same goes for our Thursday, one o'clock Bible study in the fellowship hall and online or by phone. Hope you join us for one of these two events. All are welcome to come and join. We also want to invite you to in-person live services of Holy Communion. These will be on July 4th and 5th at our usual worship times, 5 o'clock on Saturday, 9 and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, July 5th. We'll meet outdoors on the front lawn, invite you to bring a lawn chair. For a call to worship, we are going to sing the hippo song. This is a favorite of a lot of our kids. We'll sing it twice so you can catch on to the actions it's a song about how God made the whole wide beautiful world, including you and me, because God cares so much for us. Let's sing. In the beginning God made the seas and the forest filled with trees. God made the mountains up so high. Above it all God placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much God cares in this time, God had some fun. God made a hippo, we don't hip hip hippopotamus, hip hip hooray, God made all of us. Hip hip hippopotamus, hip hip hooray, God made all of us. Now, the second time we do this, I think we should should start slow and speed up. All right. Here we go. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees. God made the mountains up so high. Above it all, God placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much God cares in this time, God had some fun. Made a hippo that we don't touch. Hip hip hippopotamus. Hip hip break a made of us. Hip hip hippopotamus. Hip hip break a made of us. Oh, I got confused. Woo. How fun! Thanks for singing and dancing with us. Let's continue worship now with a time of confession. We'll confess our sins together. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we are, we are tempted, tempted to, to be thankful, thankful only when, when things are going, going well for us. us. We, we are, are tempted, tempted to take credit for all that is good in our lives. lives. We forget that all good things come from you. We fail to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Forgive us for being short-sighted, arrogant, and thoughtless. Cleanse our hearts and bring us back to your side, for you are all that we truly need. Amen. God hears our repentance 
and answers our request for forgiveness. Receive the assurance of God, our Creator's mercy, and rest in the loving embrace of the God who made you, loves you, and redeems you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's sing together our gathering song, Let It Rise. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Who laid the earth's foundations? The God, God who, who cares, cares for us. us. Who made the stars and heavens? The, the God, God who, who cares, cares for us. us. Who poured and bound the seas? The God, the God who, who cares, cares for us. us. We open our ears to listen to the maker of the world. We listen, listen to, to the, the God, God who, who cares, cares for us. us. Let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, you, you created all, you know all, and you care about each one of us. Forgive us for the ways we have not appreciated and cared for your creation. Thank you for forming the majestic splendor and intricate details of our world. Help us live with holy perspective on our place in this world and open our hearts to listen to your voice. In, In Jesus', Jesus name, name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. For our mission and ministry moment, we'll hear from Johann Kleisch. I do my best to listen to God, and that's what brought me to St. John's. My first experience at St. John's was shortly after my grandmother, Tilly Kleisch, had passed away, and Pastor Matt pastored her funeral. That was shortly after Pastor Matt joined St. John's, and while it was a good experience during a difficult time, I didn't think about joining St. John's at that moment. A couple years later, my daughter Hope attended St. John's after school program called Soul Troop. After attending with her friends a couple times, Hope had asked if she could start joining every week. A couple months later, I felt compelled to support Hope's faith journey, and after listening to God, we decided to become members of St. John's, and that has been one of the best decisions of my life. After attending a couple Sunday services, I noticed something was special about St. John's and Pastor Matt. His ability to translate God's Word into a format that everyone can understand and relate to is an incredible gift. After almost every sermon, I say, wow, either to myself or to the person next to me, because his sermons are that powerful, in my opinion. The more I attended St. John's, the more I wanted to be involved. And apparently God knew that because I was soon asked to help out once a month with the Soul Troop after school program. After listening to God, I decided to start helping with Soul Troop every week because I knew there was a need for a regular helper and I heard God. A couple years later, I heard God again and became a confirmation small group leader. 
between working with youth groups and participating in men's retreats, men's only nights, service days, serving meals, planting trees, the Christmas bazaar, and everything else that's going on with St. John's, you could say I've heard God, and I've been impre incredibly blessed with all the amazing experiences. Next time you consider helping someone or getting involved with something, take a few minutes to listen to God, and the correct decision will present itself. Thank you. We welcome Maria Bonine, former pastoral intern with us and recent graduate of Wartburg Seminary with a Master of Divinity degree as our guest preacher. Job endured great suffering and lamented. A great dialogue between Job and his friends, the kings, had not answered the big question we still ask this day. Why do human beings have to suffer? Some questions like this one have no answer, for any answer wouldn't suffice. Job defends his right deeds as he wrestles with the why behind his suffering and losses. In our reading today, we learn that God listened to Job's laments and his account of good deeds. And then we hear God respond. Listen as our journey with Job continues. A reading from Job chapters 31 and 38. Job said, Oh, that I had one to hear me. Here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. Oh, that I had the indictment written by my adversary. Surely I would carry it on my shoulder. I would bind it on me like a crown. I would give him an account of all my steps. Like a prince, I would approach him. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far you shook. Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Who has cut a channel for the torrents of rain, and a way for the thunderbolt to bring rain on a land where no one lives, on the desert which is empty of human life, to satisfy the waste and desolate land, and to make the ground put forth grass? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Why do human beings suffer so much? This is the million dollar question we wrestle with throughout our daily lives. When someone we love endures debilitating disease, unexpected loss of a loved one, or hurdle after hurdle of hardships, we ask, why? Why God, what did this person do? In our own times of suffering, we cry out, what did I do to deserve this? Then we wait and we listen for God to answer. What ails you this day? What circumstances in life have your heart and mind repeatedly asking, 
why. The more we try to figure out why, the deeper the well of pain becomes. Of all the questions we ask in our lives, the why of suffering remains unanswered. The story of Job will forever be etched in my heart. It reminds me of the summer I spent serving as a student hospital chaplain. That summer, suffering took on a whole new meaning. Each day, my eyes and my ears and my heart were turned from my own suffering to the lives and the stories of the patients, their families, and the hospital staff. In a level two trauma center, suffering isn't a daily occurrence, it's an every second reality. That summer, I listened to so many people scream, why? In those deep times of anger and fear, the healing power of presence and the art of actively listening were revealed to me. The patients taught me how to embrace suffering, and I learned to cling to God in every moment. The sights, smells, and noises of their rooms will forever be in my heart and mind. When we listen with all of our senses, paying attention to everything that surrounds us, we not only learn more, but our suffering is transformed into deep empathy for others, and it creates wholeness within ourselves. I read the book of Job several times that summer, trying to find the answer to the why God allows suffering with other student chaplains and our supervisor, we wrestled with the suffering we witnessed in each hospital room and on the faces of doctors and nurses, social workers, police officers, and the ambulance crews that we assisted. I wrestled with my own anguishes of never having the why question answered. With anger as my weapon, I went to battle to conquer the pain of suffering that I had zero explanation for. I'd always thought of myself as a comforting person, one with words to soothe pain, one with answers that would provide hope. But that summer, I felt powerless. I was ill-equipped to provide the answers that patients so desperately needed. I learned that in my words, in some instances, my words might cause more harm than good. So I sat with the patients, and I sat with myself in silence, listening, waiting for an answer to appear. It's in patient hospital rooms that God revealed to me the healing that comes through listening. I became more comfortable with silence, and I learned that I was never going to have an answer to the why question. And I found comfort in no longer needing to know why. When we continually ask why, we place a cloak of darkness upon ourselves that says, surely, I deserve this suffering. I did something wrong. This pain is my punishment. Job wrestled with the same questions, and he put on the same cloak of darkness. He struggled trying to figure out where he had gone wrong. He listed his good deeds he desperately needed to know what he had done to deserve such suffering and loss. His friends engaged in long dialogues with him, trying to convince him that his thoughts were causing more harm than help. The last friend to speak with Job was Elihu, and he attempted to talk with Job about his arrogant behavior 
of creating a list of all Job had done right, Elihu's deepest desire was for Job to listen to the truth that lie within him. Job's faith in God was more important than Job's desperate desire for an explanation for his suffering. Job was death to the truth that was so evident to others. It wasn't any sin that had caused Job's suffering, but Job's defensiveness was causing him to sin. Yes, sin comes with consequences, but sin is not the cause of suffering. The pain of suffering can cause a person to sin. And this was the case for Job. Job not only wrestled with the why question, but he allowed the question to consume him. And constantly focusing on the why, Job missed out on the joy of life that God intended for Job to have. Living in the why cuts a person off from truly living. When life feels like a whirlwind, the story of Job reminds us that it was in a whirlwind that God finally spoke to Job. The answer Job received wasn't what Job had hoped for. He wanted a list of reasons why he had suffered. Instead, God questioned Job. In a matter-of-fact way, God broke through Job's arrogant behavior and he redirected Job. It's as, it's as if God had to do so so that Job would listen. This image of a voice being powerful enough to be heard through a whirlwind reminds me of my daily duties of a busy hospital and how those days broke my anxiety and arrogance as a student chaplain. As I stood outside a patient's room, listening to my heart pound loudly, I prepared to enter the room with a deep breath. Breathing in the strength of God helped me to endure what laid on the other side of that door. And as I exhaled, I was filled with hope that my presence was enough. And even if there was no conversation to be had, listening would promote healing. God revealed God's self to me in new ways that summer. In the whirlwind of trauma, the daily tour with God by my side at the hospital helped me to heal from deep wounds. Listening to the beeps of machines, the loud orders of busy staff, bad news and good news delivered to families and patients, and the screams of shock, and yes, the silence of death. In all of that, God showed me the beauty that was all around. In the faces and the words of doctors and nurses, social workers, friends and family gathered, love was seen, love was felt, and love was heard like I had never heard it before. The love that lies within the story of Job's great suffering was with people who loved him enough, who tried to help him by being present with him, by listening to him. Yet the greatest story of suffering is the one that we need to hear repeatedly. The love story of when God came in human form as Jesus. God came so that God would know what it's like to suffer in human fashion. And Jesus asked why. Why, O oh God, have you forsaken me? But Jesus did not let the why question consume him, nor did he get an answer. Unlike Job or us, Jesus suffered without defending himself. And his suffering 
was for you. In our earthly lives, we will not know the answer to why humans suffer. But during the whirlwinds of suffering, expect that in faithfulness and in love, God is there. Listen intently. Trust that God will guide you through your suffering. You can't go around it. Your suffering is not the result of your sin, for through Jesus, your sins are forgiven. And God's great creation, God created you to live an abundant life, a life that's free for you to love and serve and endure suffering with others around you. As you bear witness to Christ's suffering for you, listen, God will reveal the hospital in which our world is. You are the chaplain. Take a deep breath. God will fill you with courage to endure each day. For God walks with you down every hall, through every door. Your sins nor your list of good deeds matters. Your faith in God and your relationship with the suffering in this world are what matters. Listen. Trust and know that when the chaos of life threatens to destroy, God will create order in that chaos. In the whirlwind, God listens and God answers, for God is always there. Thanks be to God. Creations with me.
Living together in trust and hope, let us now confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. Amazing God, you are wonderful and great, and we are small and limited. Forgive us for speaking of things we know nothing about, and for asserting our understanding without bias. Thank you for enduring our foolishness. Give us holy perspective and help us focus on the things that matter in the places where we can make a difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amazing God, we praise you for the majesty of your creation. Help us listen to your voice in the beauty and the wonder of the world. We pray for the health of the land, the seas, and all animals. Forgive us for mistreating this planet by our negligence and greed. Give us your inspiration and wisdom to turn in our tracks and care for our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amazing God, we pray for all leaders in the church, in government, in health care, and in society. Help them to lead with compassion, skill, and wisdom. Guide Governor Evers, President Trump, Congress, and the Supreme Court in doing your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amazing God, we pray for protesters and police that you would lead us all to a new day of peace with justice. We pray for medical workers and researchers and for those who are sick or sorrowing from the coronavirus, that you would lead us toward health and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we ask you for healing in body, mind, and soul in whatever ways you know that we need. We especially lift up to you these friends of our church, Carson, Ronnie, Jesse, Ensley, Gretchen, Jacob, Doris, Wanda, John, Lindsay, Dana, Jody, Anna Mae, Bo, Jim, Glenn, and John. Help us to care for one another with compassion and open hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the children of our church, especially those in elementary and middle school. We pray that as they grow, they will hear your voice calling them into your service, in the church, in the world, for the sake of their neighbors. Help them to imagine being pastors and deacons, church council leaders, Sunday school teachers, mentors, and community leaders. Give them courage to say yes to your call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now in silence for those who do not know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your capable hands, we place all of these prayers. We put our trust in your faithfulness to answer them in whatever way you choose. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. We invite you to share your prayer request with us on Facebook. Just look for this post on our Facebook page, The Prayers of the Church for June 27 and 28. For who and for what shall we pray together? And in this way, we can share our prayer requests together. 
We also invite you to visit our website, go to our homepage and look for prayer requests, and then you can request a prayer from our prayer team or be added to our prayer list. And please do remember those on our prayer list in your own daily prayers. It is time for the children's message show. Young friends, we invite you uh, to come near and join us for this special time just for you. Uh, we invite you to remember your noisy offering. We're giving money for fruit cheese fruit tree seedlings for our friends in Africa. And you can uh, be collecting your offering and then make arrangements or mail it in or drop it off. And in this way, we can still uh, be generous and, and help all around the world. Well, for children's message today, Miss Becca, I'm going to show uh, a number of different pictures. Mm -hmm. And I want you to say, what, what is the picture? Okay. And we're going to listen to what God is saying to us through the picture. Okay. okay, so we're going to look with our eyes, but we're going to listen with our ears to okay. each picture. So what <gasps> is that picture? What do you think it is? It's a mountain. It is a mountain. It is Mount Kilimanjaro. Oh, I heard that's really, Africa. really tall. It's amazingly tall. Uh -huh. And when I listen to a picture like this, I think God is strong. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, that how about... going nowhere. <laughs> right. Yeah. How about a picture like this? Uh, a forest of trees. It is a forest. You've mm -hmm. been to this forest. <gasps> Maybe you've been to this forest. It's in the UP, the Upper Peninsula. This is the Ottawa National Forest. Yes, I just recently visited this forest. And I think we can look out on a forest like this and we can listen for God's voice say, I am alive. Yes. There's a lot of living things in mm -hmm. forest. How about a picture like this? That looks like a really big ocean. It is an ocean off of a place that we've been before, uh, too. Maybe you've been there. It's off the coast of Hawaii. Oh, Beautiful good. place. It's the Pacific Ocean. And when we listen to a picture like this, the, the creation that, this, that God made, we hear God say, I am deep and wide. Yes. God's ocean. love is deep, deep and wide. wide. Yeah. So big. Oh, okay. My. What do you think this is, Miss Becca? Any of you know? Well, my guess is the Grand Canyon. It is the Grand Canyon. My family visited there. Have you been there? When I was a kid, yeah. I would like to go. Maybe you've been there. And when I see something like the Grand Canyon, I think God is saying to us, I am powerful. Oh, yes. And creative. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. A picture like this. Now, you've been here, too, and I'm guessing many of you have been there also. I believe this is Magnolia Bluff. <gasps> I did not tell her that. I promise. <gasps> I think it's because of the fencing. Like yes. It, yes it's up on the top of the bluff. On the top, yes. And when I see a picture like this, I think God is saying to us, I'm all around you. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. We can learn a lot about God from creation <gasps> What it, you know, this animal. What's this animal? It's a koala. Yeah. And when I look at a picture like this, I, I listen for God's voice say, I am gentle. Mm. A koala and a, and a baby. They are not aggressive creatures, koalas. Yeah. Mm -mm. I am gentle. Mm -hmm. And how about this? Is it a platypus? It is a platypus. <laughs> I wonder if you got that too. Now, a platypus <laughs> is a very unique creature. Uh -huh. It has a bill like a duck. Feet like a frog, uh, venom like a snake, what? and lays eggs like a bird. Oh, my word. A very creative. And when I listen to God's voice in the platypus, I think I hear <laughs> God saying, hear? I am fun. Oh, that's for sure. Our God is fun. <laughs> Our God loves fun. We can learn so much about God from creation. Yeah. This is a picture of the peaceable kingdom oh. about what God, about God's beautiful world. And I look at nature and creation and we can learn so much about our God. We hear God say, I made all of this mm -hmm. and I made you and me. Mm -hmm. and, and we even learn that God takes care of all oh, of this. Absolutely. And God takes care of you and me. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And for the peace, I invite you to open your hands and receive the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. We have a generous God. Mm -hmm. God has given us all we have and all that we need when we give of our time and our talent and our treasure, we participate in God's generosity mm -hmm. and we experience God's joy. 
Though we cannot give through the offering plate, we can give online and by mail. And we invite you to do that as you are able. We also give our hearts and our lives to shine for, with the love of God. Let's sing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. In thanksgiving for the gift of our lives and our offerings shared, let us pray. Generous God, we are not, not always grateful for whatever comes our way, and yet we seek to be faithful through our giving and service. Bless the offerings of our hands and our hearts. Use us for your greater purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is Hear Our Praises.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.